Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Star Ocean. Now, if you recall last time, well, technically I guess last video you guys saw was episode 10, which is the last episode. Last one I recorded was the character selection overview thing. But either way, in both of them, I told you that I would, uh, once I figured out which characters I was going to get, I'd meet you back at HOT and we'd continue on. However, because of the selection I've decided to go with for characters, um, well, we want to do a private action here now as opposed to later. So, that being said, let's head into the lively town and get us a drink. Now, um, like I was saying, who knows how long ago it was now, but uh, in one of the previous episodes I talked about uh, whether I'd actually be doing all of the uh, private actions or not. Now, it's hard to explain this properly, and that's all we get. That That's great. Yeah, she her earring sparkles. I think that's the one you bought for her. I'm not sure, but that probably wouldn't be there if you didn't buy her the uh, thing earlier in the game. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, like I was saying uh, about the private actions. Now, I said before that I wanted to do them all because there just wasn't all that much character development without them. However, there's a new one that opens up every so often for such and such a character at such and such a town. Because I won't be able to recruit all the characters, I also won't be able to get, um, you know, all of the private actions anyway. So I'm not going to go back to towns over and over and over again to get multiple private actions unless they benefit me with items or skills or something. Uh, that being said, I will go through them all once each with the characters I happen to have at the time and see what happens. Anyway, uh, for the private action here, we get to share a drink with uh, Sias here. And as you notice there, up here, there's a little bottle that uh, is now empty. So with that being said, let's get out here. Strange. Apparently so. Huh? What are you doing? This is a good feeling. Beer is a good thing. Now, you can no longer dash, and you're walking, I think, slower than you normally walk. And he has that stupid thing on his head. I don't know how long that lasts. You're only supposed to go right back in here, and unfortunately, we're going to walk really, really slow. The entire purpose of this uh, private action is to talk to Cius multiple times and have multiple drinks. Each time, Radix will say, only one, and each time you come back, you have only one more. And after you drink one more, you will see another empty bottle. This time on the floor. I'm, for some reason, now I can run. I always found that kind of amusing. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so this dialogue is all the same. So I'm going to do the rest of this stuff off screen. I think you do this about four times. And then you come back. And the scene will be a little bit different. So I'll just cut out the, uh, the extra little bit until I get to where I want to be. Okay, so this time we get a little extra dialogue here. I kind of forgot that they did that. Anyway, I, um, uh, um, ooh, speaking gibberish. Apparently even his tail got, uh, mucked up and Radix passes out. Now, you would think that this would probably be the last of the little things. This was actually only one more. So, it's, uh, actually not the last one. There is one more sequence if we go in there one more time. Yeah, I wonder if we get any different dialogue talking to people now that we're drunk. Did you see a fox? I'm not making any references to that song because that song is extremely annoying. No song references. Well, not that one anyway. Now, this is the fourth time coming in here. The fourth time coming in here, we get to uh, see us picking a fight with uh, a guy named Ark and his buddies. I don't know why you would be copied because you're weak, but yeah, he, he's a little toasty right now. And we actually get swearing, like, that kind of blows my mind a little bit, and C.S. is right, it should be his line because he's portrayed in this game as a foul-mouthed drunk. And the thing is, 
I can't recall because I haven't used him since my very first playthrough a number of years ago, but I haven't seen him swear up to this point. So, yeah. And the bartender, of course, is worried about his bar. Anyway, if you select assist, depending on how well it goes, yeah. Sometimes it'll work and you'll go in here and you'll be able to help him out, get some experience. And get some items, blah, blah, blah. Eventually. And the uh, PA stops as soon as you do that. Now, for some reason, even if you help him, he says, you've got no honor. Now, if you go back to this point again, sometimes if you select to help him, okay, it's not going to work. Help me. Yeah, he'll say this line instead, and you'll stumble drunk, and CS will be forced to go it alone, which of course still doesn't matter. You get the same line regardless. Now, if you select watch, again, same thing happens, but I don't think it changes his line of dialogue when you leave the uh, town there. So, I always found that kind of weird. Yeah, see, he, he doesn't seem to like it regardless. I, I'm assuming that would probably lower your approval rating. I don't know for sure. I don't have, like, an algorithm guide for how that works. I know from the few walkthroughs I've been able to skim through that uh, some things raise it and some things don't. I would assume this lowers it, but again, like I said, I don't know. Anyway, about the pirates. Yeah, if you recall um, up above, the pirates are, are, are the problem why we can't take a boat to the Kingdom of Astral. But with that being said, I'm going to motor back to Hot, and I'll meet you guys back there. Okay, we're back. Now, this is a choice for you guys to make. As soon as we come back in here to uh, finally finish up our little uh, task here, and that is to bring back this weird bunny statue. Anyway, we do that, we get our money, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Now we get our little option. Now that we've completed our mission, I think he actually gets that money. I'm not sure if we get it. Ah, either way. Anyway, he's going to go search for treasure. And here's the option. What kind of treasure? Most important thing. Always got to check about the treasure. Ah. Up Mount Meetup. Well, we've actually already been in there and did a little early run and commandeered ourselves an item or two. So uh, we already know about that one. Anyway, here is the option to travel with Cius or not to. This is basically your permanent recruitment point for Cius. If you want him, you miss out on one character for sure. Believe, anyway. You might be able to get him and then get somebody else and then get her. Anyway, the character recruitment ability algorithm thing, it's confusing as hell in this game. Anyway, Cius basically is what we've seen of him. As a character, he's not my favorite uh, personality-wise or in battle, and I really see no, like, I won't, wouldn't consider using him in my end party, so I'm not going to recruit him. Now, I said that, uh, yeah, so let's, let's just part ways right here. Anyway, see you later. I, of course, removed all his equipment before I let him go off on his own, so now he can go and, uh, you know, try and survive without his sword. <laughs> Sucker. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not going to recruit him. I don't find him all that useful. He doesn't allow you to get very much. Um, if you do recruit him, it changes certain events in the game of when you get certain characters and allows you to get um, what is called the charm, which is an item that is given to you by another character. If you recruit that character at a certain point in time, and they'll give it to you once you get to the last town we're going to go to. 
So that being said, you can use that character to customize said item. That's the one I talked about before that was only something that only Radix can equip. So it's not really worth going out of your way to get because one, you can customize it. Two, you can get better. And by the time you get to this final area or the final town, you can go and make sure you can find a way to farm out those items anyway. The good ones, not the second best ones, the best ones. Anyway, I'm rambling, so I'm going to meet you back in Portmus with my two remaining characters. Okay, we're back. Now, on the way back, I decided to do a little bit of level grinding next to that spring there because we're really going to need it for the next area. They kind of designed it around having Seas and the fact that it's a rather difficult area with just two characters. So I did a little bit of level grinding, and I think about you know, a level and a half or so, and then I moved on, came over here, and rested up at the inn, made sure I was uh, in good shape. Meantime, I haven't gone over my skills in a while. I've learned uh, some new techs here. Shock Sword at level 12. Um, we also learned Flash Whirl, and I'll show off some of these, and Blaze Sword if I didn't mention that before. I can't recall if I did or not. Anyway, I like using Blaze Sword on my right side and Shock Sword on my left side. They are both uh, obviously elemental. Uh, Flash Whirl is not, it's long range. It's not particularly useful when it's long range because it's too random, but I will show it off anyway, and it does have its uses. Uh, Iria still has not learned much of anything. Unfortunately, she's stuck with her. Uh, her Hadouken or Kamehameha Wave or whatever you want to call this little tech that she's got. And uh, yeah, so as far as equipment goes, it hasn't changed at all since last time we uh, we saw anything. Uh, technically, with the Brigandine, I could equip that on uh, Radix and then give her the Kung Fu Garb, which is better in terms of defense than, say, the Robe. So they would balance out a little more. But Iria really needs the defense at this point more than Radix does, so... Anyway, with that being said, let's uh, talk to this guy, and we already know that we can't go to Astral, so let's talk to him and see if we can do something about these pirates. So, we're stuck. Let's see, we'll get rid of them for you, we'll do it after we get ready, or let's go take a nap. I don't know why there's three options here. There should be one option here. Let's do this, because without doing this, we cannot proceed with the game. So let's do this, and uh, let's get it all done. Get rid of these pirates. They're uh, kind of preventing us. In order to trigger this dialogue, you just have to run over toward the boat. Um, as you can see, yeah, we're not talking to anybody. It just We're there. I, I don't know. Anyway, it gives you the option to go shopping first. Not that you need it. You know, you probably would have done your shopping before coming here, so... Anyway, now that we've done this, we get a very fancy looking fade to black and fade into a very kind of boring scene onto the island. And of course, it doesn't tell me here. It's just a force of habit in an RPG. Oh, I need to know where I am. So I press that button. Anyway, this is the Velkant uh, Pirate Cave. Now, a lot of these areas are going to be rather confusing, not at the beginning of the game, well, one of them is, but uh, for the most part, not so much at the beginning of the game, more toward the end of the game. And we got some new enemies here. Not too much to worry about. That's one of the reasons why I gained the extra level or so that I did, is to reduce the amount of damage I would uh, suffer from here, because there are some quite difficult enemies. There's actually nothing up here, and I don't know why I came up here. Anyway, we got some more new enemies here. If we haven't seen these guys before, I don't think we have. These guys have, yeah, a stunning attack that uh, they hit multiple times, so you, it's one reason why you want to get some decent defense prior to coming here, and another reason why Iria has that extra armor. Uh, so let's obviously run into more battles. Anyway, we want to take the left and the right uh, doors first before going to the center door. And I'm just spamming the A button at this point because, yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter. Using text on these guys is unnecessary. Anyway, if we go up here, gas. Well, there's nothing we can do here. I don't think it lowers your HP or anything or MP. I don't think it really does anything right now. 
All right, if you approach this door and press the A button, it can be broken down with a body blow. This is the only point in the game where you have to, and I'll underline that, you have no choice but to learn a skill. You have to learn the dash skill, which is done by putting one point into Gale. That's all you have to do. Everything else is optional, recommended at some point, but if you run at the door, you'll knock it down and allow yourself to go in there. Now, this area has a very, very difficult enemy that is basically like a mini-boss. And... area done sitting on your ass right now? Yeah? Get up and help me. Anyway, we got a Flare Bomb. I also bought another Flare Bomb off screen because, uh, next boss will, uh... Well, we'll benefit from having it, let's put it that way. There's uh, some more gas over there. Remember that for uh, later there. Now down here, it doesn't look like there's anything, but there's a battle. Game, stop interrupting me. All right, let's uh, show off. Yeah, that right there is our uh, flame attack. And that is Shock Sword. Shock Door Sword only hits once and does a lot more damage overall than Blaze Sword. But Blaze Sword hits twice and same reason why I bought the Flare Bomb, the upcoming boss is weak to fire, and this is actually a doorway. Now, over here, we're gonna go pick up some treasure. Blackberries, always nice to have. Aqua berries, meh. Over here, head down. Eh, we got a resurrect bottle. Remember to just salvage them, or, you know, make sure you don't run out, because that would be a bad thing. Especially at this stage in the game when we can't buy them. Now, because the mini-boss that we can run into, and I haven't run into him yet, obviously, is as difficult as he is, I would recommend not going too far into this area. If you notice this door, it's got a little padlock on it. How flipping this switch over here can remove a padlock, I don't know, but then again, it does. I guess it doesn't remove it. It lifts the door. Though I don't know why the padlock would be on there if the door lifts. Go figure. Now, I'm not sure if I've mentioned this yet, but uh, when I was looking for maps for this game, I ended up going to VG Maps and getting all of the uh, actual, like, you look at these maps and they're like screenshots from the game from a lar like a, a larger, what's the word I'm looking for, from more of a kind of a blown out view, like you if you're using Sight in Final Fantasy IV. Now, if you look down there, Oh, there's a, there's a girl in there. What's she doing? It's hard to tell. She's actually uh, playing a flute or an ocarina, depending on the translation. But, uh, yeah. So, here's a save point. Uh, if you go forward, you will fight a uh, not-quite-boss, so uh, I don't want to do that quite yet. I would like to show off the, uh, the little mini-boss that we can run into randomly, if I can, because he, it kind of uh, shows how this area is going to lead, you know, how difficult this area can be if you run into him at a bad spot. Now, if I can't run into him, then, you know, tough. But uh, I do want to run into him a little bit because he is, like I said, difficult. And I do want to show off some amount of strategy for him. Please, run into a battle. Alright, here we go. Finally! I don't know why it took me, like, another 20 minutes to find this guy. This is the mini-boss. Now, he probably won't be as hard as I was making him out to be because in the time that I took to find him, this is Flash Girl, by the way, it, uh, I probably leveled up a lot more than I was intending. Now, normally he does a lot more damage than that, usually over 100. Now, I'm gonna undo some of my levels, but obviously I won't be able to undo them all. But yeah, every time you run into this guy, you pretty much have to use your blaze um, blaze sword tech to get a lot of experience, but you pretty much just um, get rid of all of your MP. You can also get a drop of a green green barrel, which is a little gem, which there, yeah, it's like an offshoot of an emerald or something. I, I'm not too sure. I can't recall, but uh, yeah, not particularly interesting. Um, if you have to wait that long to fight the guy, 
it's not all that helpful. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to undo some of these levels. I think I'm going to go back down to level 14. Uh, but you do need to do some amount of grinding in here anyway. And I came here, I think I was level 12. You get a lot more experience in here than you do in the areas prior to this. But uh, increasing your defense by gaining a couple levels before coming in here will make it so you don't have to run back to heal all the time. Because if you come in here where pretty much if you're running straight through and you're say like level 11, you're going to run in here, get a couple of chests, go out, heal at the end, come back, you know, go a little further, go back, heal. Every time you run into this guy, go back, heal. Yeah, it, it gets kind of tedious, but uh, that's why I did the little bit that I did before. A um, little higher level now than I would have liked, but uh, we'll undo some of it, and uh, next time we will start back at that save point that uh, we saw earlier. And yeah, that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.